Hello everyone. This is part three of the topic on phase transition and state transition. You can uh, refer to part one and part two in the link uh, given in the description. So um, in the previous presentation, I have explained about the state diagram, the different features of state diagram, uh, which basically the uh, overlay of the uh, equilibrium curve as well as a non-equilibrium curve and the transition is a function of temperature and the solid concentration uh, which involve the phase transition as well as a state transition. So at any combination of temperature and solute, uh, we can actually observe different kind of phase and state transition which can affect the processing and the, prop the final properties of the product. So in this presentation, I will illustrate the application of state diagram by using one example, that is the production of uh, doing, I mean, the production of uh, hard candy, uh, and how the state diagram can be used to understand and to control actually the process of hard candy to get the product in the form of, uh, in the final form of uh, sugar glass or a amorphous state. So the hard candy is actually uh, can be considered as a very highly concentrated sugar mass which actually uh, contain only uh, less than 2% water. So under this condition with very low water content, uh, you can imagine that the concentration of sugar is very high and it's very high to the extent that it becomes very, very viscous. So the viscosity is, you know, uh, exit 10 to the 12, uh, 14, uh, 10, to 10 to the 12 uh, Pascal second and it is uh, concentrated enough and viscous enough to be in the glassy state. So the process of hard candy is controlled in such a way so that the final product is desired to be in the, in the form of sugar glass or in a glassy state, in a glassy amorphous state rather than a crystalline state. So why do we want, uh, what's the advantages of having uh, hard candy in an amorphous state? Uh, there are uh, several reasons for this. Uh, we will provide rapid dissolution in the mouth compared to the crystalline state. So when you, you know, put a hard candy in the mouth, it can, uh, so it can solubilize uh, very rapidly and uh, release the flavor and it will provide uh, the uniform, dif uniform dispersions of flavors and colors and also the ability of the amorphous state to be molded into the desired shapes. So let's look at the process um, of uh, hard candy production. Uh, typically, hard candies are made with sucrose and corn syrup uh, as the main uh, ingredients with, of course, the addition of uh, colors and flavors and sometimes maybe acid to provide some uh, tartness or sourness. Um, so, in the process of, uh, manufacture of manufacturing of hard candies, as shown in the flowchart here, first the raw materials are mixed and then cook or heat it to ensure that all sugar crystals in the mixture are dissolved uh, completely. Then um, it will, under, it will uh, go through the uh, concentration uh, process. Then, uh, so the syrup is uh, concentrated rapidly by boiling at high temperature in the range of 120, 130 uh, degrees Celsius uh, to achieve the final moisture content or water content around 2 to 3 percent. And uh, this process has to be done very uh, quickly, very efficiently. Uh, so in the, in the commercially, in the industry, uh, we can use uh, evaporators, uh, the thin film uh, evaporators, uh, this type of evaporators, which can provide very fast, uh, rapid, efficient uh, uh, evaporation and uh, achieve the, the desired concentration uh, very rapidly. Uh, the speed of concentration here is very critical because uh, we want to produce uh, a stable sugar glass. If we carry out the evaporation here slowly or too slow, uh, it will, um, you know, concentration uh, crystallization can occur uh, during this, this step rather than um, production of the uh, glassy state. Uh, we, we don't want crystallization to happen because for hard candy, we want it to be in the amorphous, glassy state. Then, um, when we achieve this uh, concentrated uh, sugar mass, 
the, the next step is to uh, cool uh, the the sugar mass to around 75 uh, to 80 degree uh, Celsius and then uh, it will go uh, in the, to the forming process so it can cut we can cut it into a desired shape and after forming the hard candy pieces are then cooled to room uh, temperature so now let's look at the path of this process on the step uh, diagram Okay, this is how it looks like, um, how we can uh, illustrate the process that happened during the production of hot candy. Okay, let's say we start at point one here. This is the point where we have mixed the sugars in the mixture. And then uh, we increase the temperature to uh, around 120 to 130 degrees Celsius to dissolve all the sugars uh, completely. And this... Um, will increase uh, the concentration of the, the sugar by evaporating the water, by removing, by removing the water in the evaporator. So it will uh, increase the concentration to, uh, and, and uh, we achieve the reduced water content to 2 to 3% and we can actually, now the concentration of sugar become very, very high and the viscosity also become uh, very high. So we have now a sugar mass which is uh, very, very viscous. Then we cool it down uh, around 75 to um, 80 degrees uh, Celsius. The, the reason why we reduce, uh, we cool it down to around 75 to the 80 degrees Celsius is, to, uh, is uh, to allow the mixture, the sugar mass to be, uh, you know, still in the state that is not yet uh, form uh, solid, but uh, is, is actually highly viscous, but still can be formed into a desired shape. Um, here, the process of cooling here uh, must be done very quickly uh, at this point uh, to avoid crystallization. So if we do it very slowly here, uh, because in this uh, point, at point 4 here, the sugar mass is highly viscous but still in the rubbery state. So if we stay at this point uh, too long, then we may allow the uh, crystallization to occur. Because remember, uh, this is actually in the, uh, in the rubbery state uh, above. Uh, this is actually in the perhaps in the metastable or in the in the, in the labile uh, state where crystallization can occur. So it's very important actually to bring down the temperature, to cool enough, uh, and bring it down to uh, to below the glass transition curve here, so that now we we uh, get the sugar mass to form a glass uh, amorphous uh, state. And this is the end point or the desired form of product that we want in the production of uh, sugar candy. So this is uh, basically how we can uh, show, how we can apply the state diagram to show the process, the processes and the changes that happens during the production of hard candy where the final product is in the form of amorphous state or a sugar glass.